In this video, I will be talking about arrangements and kind of setting the base for going deeper into the topics of permutations and combinations. Let's say, for example, that we have three people, person A, person B, and person C, and we also have three chairs, chair one, chair two, and chair three. Now, what we want to do is we want to find all of the different ways that persons A, B, and C can be arranged between the three chairs. So a very straightforward way of thinking about this initially is we can say that we find all of the combinations when A is in chair one. So that would be person A is in chair one, then we can have B in chair two and C in chair three. We can also have A in chair one, C in chair two, and B in chair three. And those are all the combinations when A is in chair one. We can then take the combinations when B is in chair, t in chair one. So we have B and then A, C and also B, C, A. Then we can look at all of the combinations when person C is in chair one. That gives us C, A, B, and C, B, A, giving us a total of six of six possible arrangements. Now doing what we just did, which is writing out all of the different possible combinations in which people can sit is simple enough. But what would we do if let's say we had 100 people and we had, if we had 100 people and 100 seats and we wanted to find out, and we wanted to find out all of the different ways that we could arrange people in these seats. Now, in order to do that, we have to find a way to mathematically express the ways in which we can arrange the people in the seats. So let's first try and find a way to mathematically express our previous question with the people A, B, and C, trying to see, sit in seats one, two, and three. Well, we know that when we're choosing who sits where, in seat one, we have three options. We can either choose A, B, or C. So for seat one, we have three options. And as we can see here, we have this option where person A sits, this option where person B sits, and this option where person C sits. Next up, for the second seat, we only have two possible people left to sit in the seat. So for example, if A is in this seat, then only either B or C can be in the second seat. And as we see over here, for each of these combinations, we have the same thing. When we have A in the first seat, then only either person B or person C can sit in the second seat. When B is in the first seat, only A or C can sit in the second seat, and so on. So for each of these three combinations in seat one, there are two different combinations in seat two. Now to add on to this, in our third seat, there is only one possible combination left. And that's because if we already know who's sitting in our first two seats, if we know who's in seat one and who's in seat two, then only one person is left in seat three. And let's look back here, for example, let's say in this case where we know that person A is in seat one and person B is in seat two, only C is left to be in seat three. Therefore, for each of these combinations, there is only one possible combination for who can sit in the last seat. And if you look at this, this gives us three times two times one. So for each of the three possibilities in the first seat, we have two possibilities in the second seat. And for each of these two possibilities in the second seat, we have only one possibility in the third seat. And this, once again, as you'll see, gives us an answer of six combinations. Now, something which you may notice when looking at this equation, which we just wrote over here, it looks an awful lot like three factorial. So when we have three seats and three people, then there are three factorial possible combinations in which, with which we can arrange them. And the same would apply if we had five people in five seats. So if we let, let's say we had A, B, C, D, and E, and we had seats one, seat two, seat three, 
seat 4 and seat 5 and we want to find out how many combinations there are to how we can arrange our people. So in seat one, we have five available people to sit, A, B, C, D, and E. So there are five combinations. And for each of these five combinations, since one person is already sat, let's say A sat, there are only four people left to choose from. So there are four different possible ways that that can be arranged. And once two people have sat, then there are three people left to sit. When three people have sat, then there are two people left to sit. And when f uh, four people have sat, then there's only one person left to sit. And using this, we get the possible combinations are five times, four times, three times, two times, one. And this gives us an answer of 120 combinations. And if you look at this once again, our equation over here looks an awful lot like 5 factorial. So we're kind of starting to see a pattern here. When he had three people in three seats, there were three factorial possibilities. With five people in five seats, there are five factorial possibilities. And from this we can derive a general rule involving the number of possible ways people can be arranged in seats. So, and this works for multiple different types of arrangements, but let's just think of it in terms of this for now. So if we have n people in n seats, they can be arranged in n factorial, there are n factorial ways of arranging them. Ignore my spelling for now. So for example, if we have 100 people and 100 seats, and we want to find out the total possible number of arrangements, we can find that by solving 100 factorial, which gives us an incredibly long number. And if we have, let's say, 75 people for 75 seats, 75 people for 75 seats, there are 75 factorial possible ways in which they can be arranged. And as I briefly mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to be in terms of people and seats. So let's say for example that we have, let's say 20 books, and we have 20 spots on our shelf. So we have 20 spots on the shelf. Then the number of ways that we can arrange those 20 books would be 20 factorial ways. So we can reword what we said over here to be, so if you have n objects to be arranged in n possible positions, then we can say that we have n factorial ways of arranging them.